Tad, the Lost Explorer. Or as some of you may know it as, Las Aventuras de Tadeo Jones. You know, the most beloved animated movie of all time, Las Aventuras de Tadeo Jones. How could you forget such a modern, timely accomplishment? Well, I did. For about, um, six years. When I was a wee little boy of the age of... I was given this movie by my grandpa after a band concert in middle school. Well, my first initial thought was, wow, a low budget animated movie that looks like actual garbage. Thanks, Gramps. Now, I didn't actually say that, but I thought it. What would you think if you were given a DVD with a cover of this? Today, we'll be talking about a movie that I enjoyed very much in my childhood, Tad the Lost Explorer. This masterpiece was bestowed to this earth by the wonderful people at Telecinco Cinema in 2012. The movie was also produced by El Toro Pictures. Now, believe me, I tried looking up more information on this company, but all I found was pictures of Toros. Great first impression, guys. This movie was directed by the wonderful Enrique Gato, who directed such movies as Capture the Flag and Super Lopez. You remember those movies, right? Cariño, eso no es un bebé, eso es un señor enano. Quitando lo del bigote, todo lo demás lo veo normal. How could you? In 2004, Enrique also directed a short film called Tadeo Jones, which Tad the Lost Explorer is a spin-off of. Now that short film also received a sequel called Tadeo Jones and the Secret of the Basement Door, which I will probably never ever talk about because it looks absolutely horrifying. Now Tad the Lost Explorer also has a second movie, which reviewers say is very mediocre and has a lot of bad gags, which in all honesty means it's pretty much shit. So we have a short film, a spin-off of the short film, a sequel to the short film, and then we also have a sequel to the spin-off of the short film. What a big pile of shit that is, huh? Well, that's enough rambling from one intro. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Tad the Lost Explorer. So here we're introduced to Tad and his dream of wanting to become an explorer and not be a scared little bitch, which is ironic because he's a scared little bitch in the next scene. Oh crap, Grandma! <laughs> Here's another interesting factoid! You're fired! Tad, man, you can't keep doing this. This is the seventh time you've been fired this year. Seven times? Seven times? What the hell have you done to get fired seven times, Tad? Well, I can't be fired forever. Yes, you can. Of course you can. So now Tad drives to the Metropolitan Museum to show Professor whatever his bottle that he found. And of course, it's fake. Unfortunately, it's just a replica. What? A limited edition from 1999. So this professor has part of a tablet and some other guy somewhere else found the other piece. Once the two pieces are put together, it reveals some map to the city of Paititi. Or as I like to call it, Paititi. Because Paititi sounds like titty. Fuck, I'm funny. Blah, 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 more expositions, a nice 2D animation, and Tad takes Professor Heartburn to the airport to fly away. But oh! Professor! And dies. So the professor would be completely fine to go on the flight, but Tad the lost dumbass here gives Professor Danny DeVito the wrong colored pills. Yes, I'm fine. I just need my pills. I, I don't know what I'd do without my blue pill. I'm feeling much better already. Nothing could stop me from getting on that blue. Professor! We're also shown a glimpse of the villain in this movie and the most typical villain you could probably ever think of. A tall, big, Russian, white dude. Hell, why not give him a robot arm for the f sake of it? I've identified the target. He has the tablet. I'm sending his photo. Perfect. I'll report it to the boss. So in place of the professor, Tad decides to take on the adventure. Oh boy. I'm in for an adventure. So Tad flies to Peru and we're introduced to probably the most stereotypical person you will ever see in any movie. I'll take good care of you, Professor Stones. 
By the way, is there anything you need? Uh, no, thanks. I'm okay. Come on, my friend. Yeah. Uh -huh. Next, we're showing the love interest of the movie, and you know she's the love interest because this shit happens. Look, there comes the boss lady. Did you get it? It's a boner joke. For you small-brained people out there, it's a boner joke. Because the the gun went and he was like, oh, fucking boner joke. Next, Tad gets kidnapped by the same exact looking dudes. But you never know, they could be twin bad guys. Hey! Wait, let me go! That'd be something new. Good job, movie. And now we're finally introduced to the villain of the movie. Hey, you're robbing the wrong guy! I'm broke! I just got fired! Shut up. Give me the tablet. My god, what a man. No way! Okay, how much do you want? 200 bucks, and I'll stick to that van like my ex-wife to my savings. Hmm. Then one of the bad guys shoots a tracking device in the back window of the car, and Jeff eats that shit up like it's a super cookie. Oh, Jeff, you little bastard. <clears throat> hey, everybody, guess what? Another character. But this time, it, trust me, he's different. He's a bird with a cork. He's mute. And he's quirky. Come on, bird, speak up. He's mute. And don't call him bird. He gets offended. Just our luck. A mute parrot with an attitude problem. A mute bird with an attitude problem. That literally means that this bird, sometime in its life, could speak to these humans. And nobody batted an eye about that, and then had some sort of freak accident that prevented this bird from being able to speak. And they're just not gonna tell anybody about it? I feel like that's important, right? Okay, okay, so now we gotta travel yet again to somewhere. I don't know where, I wasn't paying attention. On a train, of course, and yes, you know exactly what that means. An on top of the train action scene. Because every movie has to have one when there's a train in it. Okay, bad guys on the train, some ass shots, blah blah blah. You don't really need to know what happens. The tablet ends up on top of the train. They end up on top of the train. They end up escaping on some fucking llamas. Okay, so now they end up in Machu Picchu. Go to the house of the professor. See that it's been robbed and immediately decide that they need to go to Nazca Desert. So next stop, the, the Nazca, Nazca Desert. Desert. Oh my god! Okay, this movie has some flaws, and this is one of them. They always keep traveling in this movie. They're going from one place to another so fast that it's so hard to keep track of it. I got confused so many times trying to write the script for this movie because they just jumped from one place to another in like five seconds. Because this is just so goddamn confusing. I don't know what is going on. Ah, uh, man, this movie's so annoying. Okay, bad guys find them. Oh, but they get away. And guess what? On a hot air balloon. And not just any hot air balloon, a burger hot air balloon. Okay, the bad guys find them because Jeff still has the tracking device in his tum-tum and they end up taking them to the Nazca Desert, I think. I don't know and I don't care. Now we're also introduced to two characters that I absolutely hate because they're just such assholes in this movie for no reason. Professor! Sarah, you shouldn't be here. I've come to save you. Save me? I think you're just as much of a prisoner as I am. Sarah. Uh, the father of the girl and Max Mofo, I guess. Okay, so Russian dude puts tablet and wall makes some things go woo and daddy professor reads what's on the wall and puts the bad guys in a goose chase cool so now we have the whole gang split up check this out there's something back there behind the wall this is not a wall this is a door believe me i know what i'm talking about how and why she literally has no reason to believe anything that he tells her in fact, we've never seen anything that indicates that Tad knows what he's talking about, about some weird wall thingy and something behind it. Like, f***ing what? Hello, Editor Greg here. 
Um, I just realized what I said was pretty fucking stupid. Um, he's a bricklayer. He makes walls for a living. This symbolizes the air. Wind! That's it! Come on, Jeff! Focus! So the tree is earth, and the river is water. Earth, water, wind, and fire! That's Mother Nature! Oh, a snake can climb trees! That's a river! A river equals water! Oh my gosh, a bull can let one rip! Oh, farts! Oh, that's funny! Funny fart equals wind. That's that's Mother Nature. That's the jungle. What? That makes no sense. So Sarah finds the real path to the temple, I think, and they end up escaping through some tiny hole, which should definitely not fit more than one person. But Tad, Sarah, and Amigo end up getting out. And guess what? Another fucking traveling montage. Hey, movie, can you do us all a favor and not go more than five minutes without a traveling scene? <laughs> So Tad and the rest of them decide to hunker down for the night because it's a lot of walking for them. Oh, who cares? I'm so good. Oh no, we see a twist. Hey, you idiot. I think he means you. Better go before he turns you into chop suey. Are you sure this is the place? Of course I'm sure. And don't call me an idiot, you gorilla. Just trying to make it believable. So Max Mofo is working for the bad guy. But his plan is to become the greatest archaeologist in the world. Which technically he already is. In the beginning of the movie there's some scenes, like commercials I think, where it's showing Max being this big celebrity or whatever. He's already pretty damn famous. Why does he have to go for this money thing when he already has a bunch of money and he already has a bunch of fame? This movie is starting to derail from its plot line. So Tad and the rest of them try finding the entrance to this weird temple thingy or whatever, but oh no, a puma. <laughs> Freddy, give me a hand. Ole, maestro. You know, why not? Because there's a bunch of shit going on in this movie anyway. Why not throw in a fucking puma? Stop playing with us, Professor. This can't be the right place. Hmm. Wait, what? The jungle's right there? Wait, the movie made it seem that pirates traveled so far away from any jungle and that they were just in the middle of the desert. Heck, even the traveling montage made me believe that Tad and the rest of them traveled so far away from the pirates to some random jungle in the middle of the desert. Also, why is there just a jungle in the middle of the desert but the dad could just look through some fucking binoculars and see the jungle right there? I'm, I'm, I'm going to hurt myself. This movie is going to make me hurt myself. Wait, before you kill us, can we have one last request? A super cookie! Oh, ah, you guys hear that? Couldn't have picked any other gun sound effect. You had to pick the most generic one. Good job. Good job, guys. A plus work right there. So Tad brutally murders them all and goes into the temple to try and save Sarah and the professor. That's gotta hurt. <laughs> Tad meets up with the rest of the crew uh, It's revealed that he's a liar because he's not a professor. How can I be so blind? How can I fall in love with a guy like that? He's a liar. So are you. <laughs> Sarah, help me! But first tell me if anything you said about yourself was true. I was Max Morden's number one fan. All right, cool. So Sarah almost just let Tad die. Like what? Every guy in their life lies a little bit about themselves to a girl to make themselves sound better. Everybody does that. Not just guys, girls do that too. What's Tinder for? So she's just gonna almost let him die saying that he was this professor and not a bricklayer? Who cares? Who cares? Really, who cares? You started to like him, right? She did, she started to like him, but oh no, professor, oh. Oh, get the fuck out of my face. I just want this to be over. So now what? Look, there. That has to be the entrance to the chamber of the golden statue. Okay, fine, you worthless old fart. Yellow is gold. <gasps> Sarah, Professor, against the walls! 
He could have just shot him. Max was literally standing like 10 feet away from Tad. Why didn't he just shoot him to prevent that? Now I will get eternal life. Uh, not so fast. Get lost, Tad Stones. Make me, Max Moron. Good shit, good shit. That's a fucking good job. Excuse me, what? You expect me to believe that throw did that? No, no, I refuse to believe that. Yes! No! <laughs> I feel full of life! <laughs> what? What's happening to me? So it's revealed that if you grab the statue or whatever, you are granted eternal life. But not in the way that you expect eternal life. As you can see here, Max Moron becomes a mummy. There must be an antidote to reverse this curse! No, there isn't. This is the reason why the mummy's still alive. Mummies can't be alive. It's a contradiction in terms. Sarah sucks. I'm gonna just straight up say it. Sarah sucks. And I do not like her. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was Tad, The Last Explorer. You have bad plotline. You have subpar animation. You have stupid jokes. Perfect combination for a kid's movie. I'm getting to the point where I never want to watch another movie ever again. In a scale of 1 to 10, I rank it a 4 out of 10. It sucks, but not so bad.